Today I am going to be doing a tutorial showing you guys how to paint this leopard in acrylic paint. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I'm going to be painting this leopard in acrylic paint and giving you guys some tips along the way so that you can recreate your own leopards. Whether you're working in oil or acrylic, most of the tips that I'm going to be giving you will really apply for both. The only real difference there would be for oils, I don't layer quite the same. I actually outline my subject and paint around things because it dries so slow I have time to do that. But for the most part, the way that I'm doing the brush strokes and the hair and all of that would be the same. So this will apply to oil painters too. I'm working on a Frederick's Red Label canvas this canvas had a little bit more tooth than I really like to work on so I gessoed it and then sanded it down so that it was a bit smoother which made getting detail work much easier. The paints that I used for this one were Liquitex Basics. Now let's get on to the tutorial. For this background I am blending wet into wet and it goes really fast but I do have a tutorial showing you exactly how I do this and I'll put a link to that in the video description so you can check that out. But essentially I'm just using my airbrush to continuously mist water over the paint to keep it wet so that I have time to blend because acrylic does dry so very slow. And I'm using a mop brush to soften out my brush strokes. And that only works if the paint is all wet. Once it starts to dry it doesn't work very well. But again I will have that tutorial linked below so that you can check that out yourself. I have used masking tape to tape off my borders so that I could get that black edge and then I used the airbrush with a damask stencil to get the border onto the leopard. I have painted him first brown and this is going to let some of the shadows sh show through later on when I start working in the detail of the fur. After painting him in with brown, I used a piece of tracing paper that I had previously drawn the leopard out on and transfer paper to transfer my drawing onto the canvas, which just saves a lot of time and keeps my canvas very clean so I don't have a lot of eraser marks all over the place. Once that was transferred onto the canvas, I used the black paint to fill in my spots. I don't have to worry about those being perfect perfect, I just need to get them close because I will come back through with the lighter colors for painting in the fur after. Normally you, when you see me painting eyes there's a lot more detail but at the angle that this guy is in there's not much to see so it's very very simple. For the fur on the chin I am blocking in everything with unbleached titanium white which is nice because it's very opaque so it covers that brown but I don't want to cover all the brown. I'm making sure that I let some of those bits of brown show through which gives me the depth and texture of the fur. You want to pay very very close attention to the direction that each bit of fur is going in. If you start putting random lines everywhere it's not going to look natural. You've got to pay attention to both the direction of the fur and how long or short each little section is and whether or not the fur overlaps the fur next to it. Usually the fur is growing in or kind of clumped together and that's really important to pay attention to when painting animals. I've mixed a bit of reddish brown and Naples yellow in with my unbleached titanium white to get this kind of tan cream color and I'm going to use this to block in all of the fur. Notice that it looks very flat that I'm because I am using one single color I will come back through later and do some glazing to tone down or add shadows or whatever that is needed. But by doing everything mostly in the one color like this it makes it go a lot faster. I got this painting done in one night. If I worried about which color each little brush hair or section of hair was it would have taken forever. So by going through and doing everything in one color like this just to block in the direction of each section of hair it saves a lot of time and then I will adjust the color later on through glazing. Once I get all of the fur generally blocked in where everything goes, again paying close attention to what direction it goes in. And on this guy it's going in all kinds of directions. I mean the fur is angled out all over the place. But once I get all of that blocked in I want to start building depth. So I'm going to come back through with a reddish brown color and I'm mostly going around the edges of the black. Now this color is fairly translucent so I can layer it right over the black and the black is still going to show up as being very dark but it gives it a bit more depth. Now I'm using that same color with quite a bit of water mixed in and I've gone through and started creating some of the shadows that need to be around er different areas of the fur. I'm coming through now with the unbleached titanium white and pulling out highlights. Now I'm using a rake brush to get some of this detail in. When I use the rake brush when I'm doing fur I go pretty sparingly with it. If you overdo it you end up with a very unnatural look. It gets too uniform. So I just use it here and there and then I will switch back to either a filbert or a flat brush or even a round brush to create individual details and start forming more clumps in the fur so that I get that more natural random look. 
Now, even though I've already blocked in the general direction of all of the fur earlier on, it's still really important that I'm paying attention to that. You don't wanna just start putting in random spots of, of little hairs or lines all over the place, or it will look very flat and very unnatural. The direction of the fur is what creates or indicates what the bone and, and muscle structure is underneath. Here I'm glazing a yellowish tone over all of that fur and now pulling out highlights with the unbleached titanium white. I didn't use white white almost at all on this piece. I use it on the clouds, but besides that, I really use the unbleached titanium white for most of my highlights. I'm just defining some of the fur a bit better now. I'm using a liner brush with the unbleached titanium white again to create the whiskers, which makes such a difference on this guy. You, the whiskers are just as important as the fur in paying attention to what direction that they go in. And that is it for this quick painting. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over there where I have a one hour tutorial, voiceover and everything this time, very unusual, available for you guys now. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, all of the social media sites links are below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the social media vlog. Today I am doing an today I'm going to be doing a speed tutorial with Roar. Meow. Whatever. I read an article last week that was talking about things you shouldn't wear when you're over 30. It said graphic tees. Seriously, that's like half my wardrobe. What a stupid thing. Who would stop wearing graphic tees because of your age? They're awesome. And it's a good color. Yep, that's it.